지금 이스라엘에서 인사드리는 블록미디어의 김가현 기자입니다 제 옆에 계신 분은 정말 크립토 세계에 엄청난 분이라고 할수 있는데요 바로 비탈릭이 이더리움을 만들 때 이분을 만나러 이스라엘까지 왔다고 합니다 오늘 만날 올스의 데니얼 파운더님 만나보도록 하겠습니다 렛츠 하이 Sure. And my name is Daniel Pellet. I'm the president at Orbs and Hexa. At Orbs, we are building infrastructure and blockchain for large consumer companies. And Hexa is the business development and investment arm to grow the ecosystem around Orbs and in the blockchain ecosystem. Sure. So it's an interesting uh, journey how we. Came to start Orbs. Uh, initially, our background is um, investment uh, in the blockchain space. We started investing uh, quite early on in 2013. Um, it was an interesting time because the end of 2013 is when there was the first um, token sale. Um, it wasn't called this way, but I think Mastercoin was one of the pioneers um, to lead this trend. And a lot of people from Israel were involved in this project. Actually, Vitalik came to Israel to meet with some of the people from Mastercoin to see um, the innovation there and um, the possibilities of building a second layer on top of Mastercoin, on top of Bitcoin. I think that was one of his uh, initial realizations that he needs to build a dedicated blockchain for smart contract and, and doing it on top of Bitcoin uh, is difficult and not necessarily the right way. Um, but from an investment perspective, it was a very interesting time because a lot of new tokens were generated at a low market cap with very interesting, innovative stories. So if one token is more fast from a transaction throughput, another is more anonymous, another one is doing smart contract, another one is centralized storage. And this was attracted us initially and we started investing in token sales from the end of 2013 and the last uh, five and a half years. Um, and, and this has been successful with the growth of the market and the growth of some of these tokens. Um, but if I fast forward a little bit, in middle of 2017 is really where the market um, of token sales uh, started to grow at a dramatic pace. Instead of three, four, five token sales happening a month, suddenly you see 70 ICOs happening a week. And we realized that we have to change our uh, strategy. And one of the things um, that we started um, thinking about is that if we can bring real companies from the real world that have user base, that have revenues, governance, um, that have a track record and help them transition into the blockchain space, what is now called reverse ICO, um, that would be a very interesting from an investment perspective and also it will help mature the ecosystem uh, in, a, in a faster way. Um, so to do that, we hope in Hexa. Hexa is a consulting arm to help real companies transition into the space. Uh, we work with some large companies such as uh, Kin that did a $100 million token sale about a year ago. Yeah. We're working uh, with Zinc. It's a project in stealth by Iron Source. Mm -hmm. That's one of the largest and most successful ad tech companies yeah. based in Israel. And this process uh, has been very successful. Uh, Hexa is today one of the largest consulting arms in Israel, helping real companies transition to the blockchain space, helping them with security, token economics, um, uh, blockchain infrastructure, uh, investment relationship, community relationship. Um, but what we realized during this process is that these companies are coming, they're using Ethereum, they're raising um, funds during token sales, but when they try to transition their business onto of Ethereum on top of blockchain, um, it's not very easy today from a transaction yeah. throughput perspective, fee model that is hard to scale, and governance, update, privacy issues, a lot of things that Vitalik is openly discussing and they have a, a very, I think, well thought out roadmap, but it, it just takes time because the, the technology is complex, especially when you're carrying $50 billion worth of uh, value. Um, and this is how we actually came to start Orbs because we started realizing after we analyzed all the different infrastructure solutions like Alcoran and Tezos and EOS and Graphene 
um, that there's not going to be one blockchain, I think, that can be the best at everything. It's about a matter of trade-offs. Do you want to be faster or more decentralized? Do you want to be more compliant or more anonymous? It really depends who is the customer you're building the blockchain for uh, from an architectural perspective. Um, and because we had big consumer companies that we helped transition to the space, uh, we started to understand very hands-on, from very close, what are their requirements. And then we said, okay, we're going to uh, start the Orbs project. Uh, and one of the main things that we're proud of is that we're very requirement-driven. We work closely with design partners to design a blockchain infrastructure that can be used by big, large consumer applications. Um, so, I don't have a, a technical background, unlike uh, Uriel, my brother, and Tal, the technical co-founder. But uh, I studied the uh, law and economics, I have a second degree at law. Wow. Um, in the army, everybody in Israel uh, serves in the army. I was an officer in a bomb disposal unit. Um, so that was an uh, interesting experience. Yeah. Um, and before starting Orbs and Next, uh, I actually did the first token sale in Israel. Uh, back wow. in 2014, yeah. and it was also the first um, blockchain company that raised money from venture capital, Magma Ventures, which is one of their prominent VCs in Israel, they invested in Taptel, Ola, Waze, um, and that turned out to be uh, a successful fintech company. Um, so my background is in the financial space, uh, mostly on the business side. Sure. So I think uh, Israel has a very vibrant blockchain ecosystem. One, because a lot of uh, people, the largest unit in the army is the intelligent unit, the 8,200. So a lot of uh, engineers, you know, they're in the front line of uh, encryption and security and a lot of expertise that are very relevant to blockchain technology. Um, so that gives uh, an advantage. Also, Israel is um, a little bit like an island economy, even though we have borders and, and country neighbors, um, because of the um, politics and the dynamics, um, it's hard to export goods on the ground um, to, to other countries. But the export good uh, technology uh, and code globally is very easy. That's why a lot of entrepreneurs go into the startup high-tech space in Israel um, because they bring a lot of knowledge they acquire from the army and because uh, as an economy um, we're very driven to high-tech. Um, so I think uh, in that sense there's a lot of companies in Israel, startup companies. Uh, Israel is known to be a startup nation. There's more startup per capita than any country in the world. And there are more startup on the NASDAQ than I think Europe and Asia uh, put together. And a lot of these uh, companies are realizing the innovation and the advantages that they can have if they integrate blockchain technology inside their business, if it's to program the economy of their ecosystem. Um, so a lot of them come and advise with Hexa and we help them do this process. And every year about 800 new startups are forming. So a lot of them are now looking at, at blockchain because they see the disruption and the opportunity. So I think the two main innovation that blockchain brought into the world is one, the digital scarcity. And it's the first time that uh, technology was able to create um, uh, scarcity over digital goods. If you think about the internet that enabled the centralization of information, I can send an email to a hundred people, and even if it's the same email, that's okay, but if you try to do that with a file that is representing value or money, it's very problematic to send the same, the same file to two people at the same time, that will spend the issue. Um, so blockchain solved that uh, problem, and today um, tokens and Bitcoin and Ethereum is a really, I think, a new asset class of, of store of value. I always tell everybody I meet over the last five and a half years um, that they should uh, definitely invest into this ecosystem because if they make uh, their salaries from fiat money, it doesn't make sense to hold all of the saving in fiat money because it's an inflationary currency. You're yeah. losing buying power every year. 
So what do people do? They diversify, they put some in the stock market, they put some into gold, they put some into real estate. And then you have this new asset class, which is the best performing, performing asset class in the last eight years, Bitcoin, in the last three and a half years, Ethereum. And to diversify one or two percent of your saving portfolio into this new asset class is completely rational. Being long on fiat and short on crypto with all of your money, to me, is very unrational. And, and the second thing I think blockchain technology they uh, brought to the world is really the ability to have a peer-to-peer -peer, trustless global mass collaboration. And I think here Ethereum is, is an amazing example in that you know it was 30 cents just three and a half years ago, uh, June 2014 when they did a token sale. Um, and today it's a 50 billion dollar market valuation and at the peak it was about a hundred billion dollar market valuation and everybody that was part of this ecosystem enjoyed the wealth creation if it's the investors, the users, um, the entrepreneurs, the yeah. service providers and, and in the end Ethereum is a non-profit foundation and I don't think they even signed a legal agreement with any company Essentially, it's all built on this peer-to-peer uh, -peer trustless model that aligns the interest of everybody uh, to work around this open source project. Uh, so to me, it's, it's a whole new innovation of how you build a company. Until today, we had only two kinds. We had a for-profit company yeah. that uh, creates IP, generates revenue, and gives dividends to the shareholders. So this is Facebook, Amazon, Google. Mm -hmm. And then we had um, basically open source companies doing amazing projects. If you look at Wikipedia, it's a super amazing, successful project. Yeah. It's the biggest encyclopedia of the world, but they can't create money. So every year, they ask asking for a donation just to pay for the server costs. Mm -hmm. Or we have Linux Foundation, which is amazing. Every device today is almost using Linux, but it's hard to monetize it. Or uh, Mozilla, it's not Google. Uh, and then you have this uh, new uh, ability to create an open source company with the power of the masses, um, but with the ability to monetize it. And that gives it a lot of strength. Today, there are more GitHub repositories on Ethereum and Bitcoin than PayPal, for example. Yeah. Because everybody can connect and be part of the system and it's fair to everybody. Definitely. So uh, we, we see Asia as, as I think the most important market for, for herbs and I think for any company in the blockchain space because Asia I think is leading the path from a regulation perspective, adoption, transaction, uh, businesses. And in Asia, um, obviously Singapore, Hong Kong, um, Thailand, but it's really Korea and Japan, I think, that are, are number one oh. in regards to uh, adoption and interest. Um, so at, at Orbs, obviously, we recognize this. We're working to um, build very strong partnerships and also to have presence on the ground because we understand that we can only really, um, I think, uh, show real result and, and Build relationship with the local community by building on the ground, understanding the culture, uh, having uh, local employees, and that way we can communicate much better all the innovation and everything we're doing back here in Tel Aviv. Uh, the market in the end is not Israel, the market is the global market, and yeah. Korea is one of the leaders. Um, so we, we, the Alpha Network of Orbs is live. There are 11 partners, uh, validators on the network and we are already um, uh, transacting live transactions from two partners. One uh, is Keen and another one is PumaPay. So we're gonna share some of the result um, from uh, the, the testing that we're doing. We're also now um, finalizing the uh, marketing plans and uh, regarding Asia we are going to fly to Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, participate in Japan uh, blockchain week and also in Korea blockchain week and uh, with the launch of the network and the marketing campaign uh, are getting ready to distribute the tokens and, and really go live uh, with the network so I'm very excited about this. Uh, there's a lot of work to do on the technology and, and the business marketing side, uh, but definitely um, I think uh, a lot of people are waiting for this moment, including ourselves, and this will enable to many more people to uh, participate in, in what uh, we're launching. 
So I think one one of the main goals is really uh, to to enable businesses and successful businesses with, with millions of users to use blockchain technology uh, inside their uh, business, uh, and, and that means not just solving you know fast transaction throughput and a fee model that can scale, but also the other things that real companies care about if it's uh, compliance and governance and how do you do updates and SLAs uh, and privacy of their users. Um, so I think the biggest innovation is the blockchain itself, um, the distributed consensus, the trustless peer-to-peer -peer open network. This is the real innovation and this is where our R&D and research is focused uh, to help mature the technology. And if we do that correct, it will enable really the ecosystem to flourish and the different utility tokens and the different companies that we build on top of it. I'm a great believer that the main focus right now is really building the infrastructure uh, that will enable the ecosystem to grow. I think it's driven by three main things. Uh, one is to work on something that I'm very passionate about. I think blockchain technology is the biggest innovation that is happening in our generation. Yeah. Um, it's really the missing puzzle to the internet, the ability to have you know, trustless transactions, global transactions and transfer of value. Um, so I'm very excited that everything is happening and, and I want to be in, in the front line. And I think secondly, it's working with smart people, people that can challenge you and people that are fun to work with. So I think all the people that we hired since day one, one of the main criteria was you know, not just smart and, 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 and yeah, very passionate, but also good people and fun people and, and very authentic and, um, and uh, people. And, and the last thing is really um, you know, to focus on, on the needs of the companies without traditional venture capital worries. Because I've done the venture capital space, Ariel has done it, and Tal has done it, and um, we raised venture capital and built successful companies, and, and, but there, in the end of the day, there isn't a hundred percent alignment between traditional venture capital and, and entrepreneurs. Obviously, they do help, they do bring a lot of value, but in some moments, there, there are some trade-offs, like everything in life, and this new model of token sale, of sharing and creation with a community. I think it creates a, a new model and alignment that we are very excited about. So if I can work on an ecosystem that I think is the most interesting one, with the best people, with a community of people, of users, uh, I think uh, that enjoys with me the wealth creation, uh, for me that's the most interesting, interesting thing to do today and for the years to come. Uh, I think that's our goal, you know, obviously we, we are aiming to be one of the top tokens. Yeah. Uh, we are building the research, the technical infrastructure, but not just this, because in the end of the day, everything is open source. The barriers to entry from a technical perspective are quite low. So what gives token a value is not just the tech, but it's also the ecosystem it builds. So this yeah. is why Hexa is really driving the investment and the consulting and we're creating partnership, global partnerships. Um, but uh, I, I definitely think that uh, you know I'm, I'm super excited about it because a lot of people look just at the price, it goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways, and they don't understand the innovation that is happening behind the scene, the amazing people that are really driven and are coming into this ecosystem. Yeah. And, and, you know, I talk with my parents or you know with some other adults, and for them everything is. is very sometimes scary or new or different to so yeah. us the young people are really the ones leading this uh, uh, new frontier and, and I think that, that that's amazing and you know I'm super passionate and I'm putting all of my time and recruiting the best people to really be one of the leaders in this space.